everybody! Long time no language update! Today's video is gonna be super fun. We're gonna have a chatty video. I'm gonna tell you all about how my language plans have changed, what's been working, what apps am I using, what new habits am I trying, and we're gonna do something together which is reviewing the last week of my language learning, reviewing the last month, and planning ahead for the new quarter, even though we are already one month into the quarter. It's gonna be a long video, but get some tea, get some popcorn, get yourself comfy, and uh, let's have fun talking all things languages. Let's talk about how it has been going. I'm gonna start with a review of quarter one. For more um, in-depth goals, you can definitely check out my Twitter thread where I've pinned my goals for each quarter. So I update the thread every three months. Let me get out my handy dandy language journal, which has gained one more sticker. I feel like a child, but it makes me happy, so. At the back of this journal, I have started to do a uh, monthly reflection as well as a quarterly reflection. So on these pages here, I do a month reflection where I write down all of the languages I focused most of my energy on, what I was doing, and what worked. My March reflection was quite rough. <laughs> My March reflection was quite long and I wrote it in French and then my Q1 goals has a page here where I go through um, just evaluating what I've achieved. First of all, some things that have changed regarding the format of my language journal. If you've been following the videos about my language journal, you'll see that right at the beginning of the year, I thought that I could write a journal entry every Sunday. This is definitely doable, I do have time for it and I started writing entries in both Hungarian and Tagalog at the start of the year. But halfway through quarter one, if you'll see on my Twitter thread, I decided mm, it's probably not the best idea to be writing these journal entries every week because it wasn't so beneficial. I got more than enough reading and writing practice uh, doing homework for my language lessons on italki. And I found that because my Tagalog is still very beginner, I wasn't able to write a lot. So even though I think writing is an amazing skill, I don't think it was a good idea for me to write as such a like below A1 beginner in Tagalog because I spent most of the time scratching my head like, what can I even write about? I do acknowledge that once you get a little past that slight beginner hump, uh, once I got to, oh gosh, I haven't taken a level test in Hungarian, but I'm definitely better at Hungarian than I am in Tagalog. Once you're at a comfortable level where you can f at least think in full sentences, that's when you can start writing. So long story short, I stopped writing journal entries because I also write Hungarian essays uh, for homework and for practice throughout the week. I also tried to experiment with new things that I could do in my planner, such as writing the apps that I use. Instead of telling myself what app to use, planning beforehand, I just kept a log of which apps I naturally gravitate to. Uh, with language learning so that I could see, okay, these are the ones I really enjoy using and maybe I can start scheduling these in. And then I discovered Toggle. I am definitely not sponsored by them, but I should be because I talk about them so much. Toggle is not necessarily meant for language learning. I think it's for like freelance work where you can track billable and non-billable hours. Anyway, I've been using Toggle for a while to track uh, how much time I take learning languages. Previously I said uh, it's not worth my time to track my time because then I would feel stressed, I would feel pressured, but this started out of sheer curiosity for um, wondering how much time do I really spend on language learning versus how much time do I think I spend. I wrote a blog post about different ways to track your language learning, so you can check it out on my website at lindybuetis.com where I go into much more detail on different ways that you can track like a journal or using Toggle. But anyway, the interesting finding I had was I actually spend more time learning languages than I thought I did. I also go through some phases where it feels like learning one language is a lot more fun and motivational for me, and other languages sort of take the back seat. Right now, Tagalog is taking a little bit of a back seat uh, because I'm focusing most of my efforts on Hungarian. I also have a newfound interest in French and Spanish. Any hoodles, uh, back to how I use Toggle for my language log. I've started to just draw out the amount of hours I spend on each language in a week so that I can see which languages are taking priority. And the overwhelming majority is that Hungarian is definitely 
Well, except for this week, it was Spanish. <laughs> the majority of the time, Hungarian is the language I spend the most time on. So what we're gonna do first is go through the last week. I'll show you how I summarize my week review. Then we're gonna do my monthly review, and then we're gonna plan for quarter two. All right, let us dive straight into the review for the past week. Okie dokie, let us begin. Here I have my language tracker journal. And I also have my regular journal, which is where I track all the things I have to do during a week, just like my scheduler. So first of all, I just make a list of the languages or activities I've done in a week. It's definitely not been as good as the previous week. So I've done a lot of reading, a lot of Hungarian, uh, French, and we have Espanol, Spanish, uh, and Nihongo, Japanese. Hungarian has been, oh, embarrassingly, only 56 minutes. Reading, I've spent 46 minutes, not counting ebooks. French, 22 minutes. Spanish, 16 minutes. <laughs> and Japanese, about 10 minutes. Compared to, uh, when was that really good? Yeah, two, two or three weeks ago, I spent six hours doing Hungarian an hour doing Tagalog and an hour doing Spanish. Hmm. Any hurdles? Hey, we're not competing against anyone. We're just doing what works for us. Sometimes I might do a little like bar graph. So one block is one hour. So, I mean, I'll just say I did an hour of reading. Uh, a little more like an hour of Hungarian. 22 minutes for French, 16 minutes for Spanish and like, 10 minutes for Japanese. That's not fantastic. It's always good for me to see how it's been going. The other thing is I was off sick uh, for three days. That's why I don't have a lot of time. Uh, don't worry, I didn't get uh, what's been going around in the world. I don't want to say the name because I think YouTube like blocks the word. But anyway, uh, so like three or so days, I was just uh, sleeping in bed for a lot of time. You know, what I do with these weekly check-ins is just sort of look at what were the factors that affected um, my productivity and see, um, is, was it something I could control? Was it not? And so forth. Uh, for instance, last week, there was um, a, a big increase in, in my Spanish compared to my Hungarian. I spent three hours doing Spanish, one hour doing Hungarian. The reason for that is for Spanish, I had Sábado de Español Intercambio, which is uh, about two hours of Spanish speaking. And I had a Spanish lesson and prep, which was about um, one hour. So that contributed to the spike in my Spanish. Then the previous week, uh, the week before that, actually, Hungarian was six hours. So if I look here, I was um, reviewing my notes quite a lot. There were one, two, two or three days when I was studying in a cafe with my friend. And during those study times, I would review my notes. I also had a Hungarian lesson and an hour of studying and shadowing after my lesson. And then I had two Tagalog lessons. So Tagalog is about an hour. The reason I have this planner is, as well is because, as I have mentioned to you guys before, I do track my mood and my emotions. So this is something that I can look back on and see. For instance, uh, today uh, or this week, 27, 28, 29, I was feeling sick. I didn't learn any languages. You can go here to April and I can see 26, 27, 28. Um, the little black dot means it was not a very good day. An open circle or an open circle with three dots on top means it was a really good day. So I can also sort of go a bit easier on myself and say, hey, it's okay if I didn't do a lot because I was off sick. Essentially, that's it for my weekly summary. I keep it really simple. I used to write, you know, all the apps I do. I had these to-do lists. I reflected on how the week went. Uh, usually, now I've stopped doing weekly reflections uh, because I found that just looking at Toggle gives me a good oversight of where my time has gone. And that's a reflection in itself. And then the last thing I do is sort of plan ahead for the next week. So I'm just taking a look at my italki lessons here. So I have uh, one Spanish lesson coming up and I do know that I need to be uh, booking more uh, Hungarian lessons. So I'm definitely going to do that. 
And I'm just gonna fill in what I'm doing. So my interview in Hungarian is on Sunday. Saturday it is a uh, Sabado de, and then I have a lesson here. Seems pretty good. I guess I'll have a lot of time to focus on work and reading because my most important language activities are only three days a week. During the week, I'll fill in stuff here. And then after the week, I do the review on the right page. Okay, now it is time to do the monthly review and see how it went for April as a whole. Let me first give you a little oversight on how I do my monthly reflections. It changes every month. I don't have an exact template. For January, I just wrote the languages I spent the most time on. Uh, so that was French, Hungarian, and Tagalog. And I also write sort of other things I did related to languages, such as uh, podcasts or interviews. For February, I had a little section here. Uh, it's pretty personal, but <laughs> lucky you, if you can read Korean, you can see my, my secrets there. Uh, something happened here and then I didn't spend as much time on languages. And again, the section of what else I've been doing related to languages. For March, it was a bit different. I spent a lot more time on French, so I wrote my entire um, end of quarter one review summary in uh, French, and my friend Ali corrected it for me. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> then for the languages that I focused on in March was Hungarian, Japanese, Tagalog, French and Spanish, and whatever else related to polyglot conference or podcast interviews. I just write whatever comes to mind, like, okay, I only did one or two italki lessons, or you know, there were some solid study sessions, I feel way more comfortable to talk. And then here is the evaluation of my quarter one goals. I set myself some goals at the beginning in here about the amount of essays I wanted to write, uh, the... Uh, well, I go to I go into a lot more detail about this in my language goals video from January, so you can take a look at that. Not going to talk about that now. But I, I kind of look at what my goals were and then how I performed. So I wanted to do two chapters every month in my Tagalog textbook, but I didn't do that because I was too busy. And that's okay. I wanted to write two Hungarian essays per month, but I actually wrote six essays, so I'm very happy. I wanted to start some books and textbooks, but I didn't. <laughs> uh, I'm seeing a flaw in my plan. I think I have like very lofty goals about the textbooks and the books I want to use, so that's something I should think about uh, when planning. Then throughout the middle of the quarter, I did change my plan. So like I said before, my weekly diary entries changed into monthly and weekly reflections, which were going steady. That's all of these. Um, Spanish lessons, I'm... Okay, this has changed for this quarter. So last quarter, I didn't take any Spanish lessons on italki. I only used the Busu and Speakly apps. Whereas now, I've restarted my Spanish lessons on italki. I also wanted to read one Korean article, but I didn't do that. However, I am subscribed to a design newsletter called Tidok, and I've been reading every single one of those, so I guess it kind of counts. And I've also summarized the amount of hours I spent on italki, which was 9.7 hours. Not a lot for an entire month. Uh, I'm sorry, not a lot for three months, but I think it's still worth noting, and it's interesting for me to see where my time goes. And for April 2021, all the time that I have tracked in Toggle, uh, let's go back to April 1st to April 30th. I had 24 minutes, I'm sorry, 24 hours of reading, studying, and website. So I've just written down these times here. A majority of my time went to Hungarian, which is good because that was my number one goal for quarter one. Spanish, which is interesting because I didn't list it as my goal for the quarter. And Tagalog, only one hour. Oh, I'm sorry, I got confused. This is just for April. That's fine. Uh, it wasn't for the entire quarter one, which I've already done here. All right, I think things are looking pretty good. Not bad. Oh my gosh, my book. Can you not? <laughs> All right. Things are looking pretty good. Okay, time to continue writing uh, my reflection for April. Not sure why. Gosh, what did I write here? Not sure why what? Not sure why. Oh, I don't know. Guess I have to think of something to fit into the sentence. That's weird. Hmm. Not sure why, but I'm much more 
into reading books. If you're wondering about these symbols, the heart means, yeah, it's good, this is related to my goal. Um, the Shin character in Japanese or Chinese means new. So like reading books is a, a new entry into my logs and my blog is like a new thing that I'm tracking. And these lines mean, well, I didn't aim to do French or Japanese uh, this quarter or this month, but it still came up on my schedule and so on and so forth. There's really nothing much that goes into this, just a reflection on what I've been doing and how things have been going. You can do this in any way that you want. These stickers are not excellent, but it just makes it fun, just brightens up the page. Emoji smiley faces. I love this one. This is like my favorite emoji. One more heart. I wonder if I should write the amount of time I spend on italki. That would be interesting. Not that it's some kind of a competition. I just really enjoy looking at, I don't know, hours and comparing myself to myself. Let me see uh, my lessons. Gotta see what I did in April, so not May. I need to write this down. 45 minutes Hungarian. Okay, 350 minutes, which is five hours and 25 minutes. Wow, that's a lot compared to the previous quarter. Impressive. Okay, five hours. And really? Really five hours? If my math is wrong, I'm going to be really embarrassed, but anyway. Um, 315 minutes, which is 5 hours and 25 minutes. Yay! Now that we've done my weekly and monthly review, let's take a look at my goals for the next quarter, and I'll show you how I go about planning and ideating for that. I think I wrote this last month, and I wanted to focus on Hungarian, Spanish, Tagalog, and Chinese. Things have changed. I'm not really feeling a lot of Chinese, uh, just because I want to focus a lot of my efforts on Hungarian. I'm just gonna scratch out Chinese here, and hmm, not sure I'm gonna do anything for Tagalog. I should probably um, review my lessons and catch up on my textbook. And then the other two languages, number four, and number five is French and Spanish. I'm pretty casual with how I set um, goals because it's better for me to focus on small daily habits than really big lofty goals, obviously because I'm not finishing my books. Any hoodles. So for Hungarian, we're going to just continue what we've been doing, which is lots of italki lessons. I'm going to be on Hungarian radio soon, so that's a milestone. And I want to continue, let's say, three essays, one a month. For Spanish, I want to do weekly um, intercambio, language exchange. And I want to do daily uh, busu app. Tagalog uh, review all italki. For French, I would like to have at least two times uh, language exchange or conversation with my friend Ali. And I want to do Speakly app daily. For Sp oh, I wrote Spanish twice. No wonder, I was like, why do I have five languages here? Let me just get some white out. This doesn't mean I'm so rigid in the sense that like, no Japanese or, oh, that reminds me, I have to add Japanese. No Korean is allowed. I kind of just do what I feel like. So I'm going to add Japanese in here. <laughs> As you can see, I'm really casual with this. There's no rules. Any hoodles. Uh, Nihongo. And all I'm going to do is bumpo one chapter daily. I'm so sorry if you guys think that I am a really organized person because that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm all about <laughs> authenticity here. So I know that at the beginning of this quarter, I actually wrote my goals on my Twitter thread. So I'm gonna look at that and uh, see if my ideation here is uh, aligning with the goals that I set out in this quarter because we're already a month in um, into Q1. 
So for Q2, I uh, said I want to attend all the italki lessons I booked. Yes, that's that's in my plan. Uh, finally, start the Spanish short stories. Yes, let me get the book I'm talking about. I've read one or two stories in here, which have been great, but I haven't actually like start to finish read the book. So I mentioned this in my Spanish resources book. Uh, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in getting it. It's really awesome uh, because there are some questions like comprehension questions at the end. There's vocab list and the stories are really funny and interesting. So that's what I mean by starting this book like from start to finish. Uh, I should probably put that in here. I'm <laughs> I'm cautious of putting that in because I didn't do it in the first quarter. That was my goal for Q1. But now that I'm really way more into reading and I'm tracking a lot of my reading on Goodreads, also because my like emotions, like my feeling towards Spanish is just much better than previously, I can also add it in here and I should likely do it. So let's do short stories. Uh, read one article a month. Er, I mean, that's very doable. It doesn't take very long to read an article, but uh, I'll see how that goes. I'm not gonna write it down right now. Then I have some Hungarian goals. What did I write here? Feel comfortable enough to do the radio interview. Yeah, this is happening next week. Uh, <laughs> I'll let you guys know how it goes with that and continue my cadence of writing two articles a month. Okay, uh, two essays a month. Well, here I've put three essays. Uh, so we'll see what I get done. Um, continue attending weekly or bi-weekly lessons. Yep, we got italki lessons. It's definitely at the core of my learning. And finish two chapters in my textbook. I don't think I'm going to do this. I'm really, really struggling with my Hungarian textbook. It's so boring. I think what I'm going to change instead of uh, finishing my textbook, I want to do weekly podcast from CC. It's way more fun. And finish two. Yeah, not doing that. Tagalog goals. I definitely didn't finish my textbook. Uh, so I'll try and do two chapters a month, not a week, and learn all my verbs. Hmm. I'm not sure if I'm going to do this because Spanish and French have definitely taken the seat of Tagalog here. We'll think about that. Like I mentioned, this is a very iterative and fun process. Nothing is really set in stone. As for new habits that I'm trying, these are small, bite-sized things that I want to see as a test if I'm able to do it every day. So what I'm trying is to do a little habit tracker of just uh, four apps that I want to use for each language. Don't judge me on the first one, it is uh, Duolingo for Hungarian only because I haven't found any other app that is as good as Duolingo for Hungarian. I know Duolingo gets a lot of hate, but I find their Hungarian course to be pretty okay. I would definitely not recommend them for Asian languages like Korean, Japanese, or Chinese. Not Duolingo. But hey, for French and Spanish and Hungarian, Duolingo is not that bad. Anyways, I don't have the free version, I don't have the paid version or anything, but I do want to do at least one Duolingo lesson in Hungarian every day. Uh, then for Spanish, I'm using Busu. I've done one review video for Busu like a year and a half ago. Uh, a lot of things have changed and updated with the app. It's fantastic. None of this video is sponsored. I'm just sharing with you what I enjoy using. So Busu for Spanish. Then my most recent video review was for Speakly, which I still hands down is the best language app I've used. I'm using Speakly for French. Also because the audio listening exercises are fantastic. I am such a big fan of Speakly. Uh, so that's for French every day. And then I still want to complete the Boompo app, which I also have a review video about, which I'll link somewhere uh, for Japanese. I'm working through all the JLPT levels. I'm currently finishing up uh, N4 and then I'll move on to N3. So just these four apps that I'm doing daily. I figured um, after doing all four of these, it takes me about half an hour to 45 minutes. It's very minor and short but I wanna see if I see any benefit um, through doing this every single day, because I know small incremental progress is much better than spending hours in a week and then leaving the next few days to do nothing. By the way, for curiosity on my home screen, uh, this page is where I track all my small habits. So you'll see my daily habits are these apps, Speakly, Duolingo, Busu, and Bumpo. I put those apps on the right over here. Uh, and then other activities that I do either weekly or 
um, daily. That's how it's been going. Oh yes, as for the languages I am focusing on this month, uh, the new ones to me are Hungarian. Tagalog has taken a little bit of a backseat, like I mentioned, uh, and the rest are Japanese, French, and Spanish. I haven't done any Korean this year. And something I also wanted to mention is that the more advanced and the more fluent you get in the language, the slower you will forget it. So in Tagalog, I know that I'm still a beginner, so my forgetting curve is really, really fast. I need to go back and make sure I review all that I've learned before I sort of get back into it. But with Korean, it's been 11 years in the learning and speaking. Uh, during high school and university, I spoke it almost every single day of my life. Not doing any Korean this entire year is um, absolutely fine. Sometimes my tongue feels a little rusty, like I might speak with a weirder pronunciation than I used to. Vocabulary and understanding, it's pretty much the same as it has been for like the past five or six years. So something to keep in mind uh, that Hungarian is the only really, really beginner language. And then in order of uh, beginner to more fluent, it's uh, Spanish, uh, French and Japanese. So sort of focusing on languages at different levels that I'm not overwhelming myself or making it too easy. Well, that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, oh, I have one more thing to thank you for. Your absolute incredible generosity with your Kofi donations. I told you in a few previous videos that my sound quality is not great. Some of you have been commenting on that, I'm very sorry. But I decided it is high time for me to buy a microphone. Haven't gotten the microphone yet, but we did reach my savings goal. And I want to say thank you so much to all of you who generously contributed. And today I'll be looking for a new microphone. So hopefully my next videos will sound a lot better. Thank you all so, so much. One more thing, I started a newsletter. At the bottom-ish middle section of my website homepage, you can find a form where you can subscribe to Lindy's Monthly Language Roundup. If you haven't subscribed, I generally send it out in the last week of every month. So you can expect the next one to come out in the last week of May. What Lindy's monthly language roundup email is all about is um, just sharing some content I've posted in the month, like a summary, uh, some things that I've learned, answering FAQs, uh, sharing an interesting resource or app, and just having a little chat with you. It's completely free. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, please do subscribe and you'll get uh, the next edition of Lindy's Monthly Language Roundup. All right, that is it for today. Thank you if you've watched until here. Uh, you guys are amazing. And I would love to hear, as usual, how it's going with your language goals. So send me a tweet at LindyB on Twitter or leave a comment on this video with your goals. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye! I feel like I'm out of breath from talking so much. Bye-bye!